Hi everyone, it's Krista and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new, hello again. This is my channel. I love to do DIYs on a budget, Dollar Tree DIYs, thrift flips, farmhouse and rustic decor reads, and seasonal decor. So if you like what you see here, you know what to do. Hit that red subscribe button. I would love to have you join our little family here. Also leave me a comment. I love to hear what you guys think. And also give me a thumbs up. That helps my channel. You can also follow me on inter Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. And now I started a Facebook group too, Krista's Crafty Life. Go follow me over there. I will have all those links down below. I also have a read shop. It's called Krista's Read Designs. So check that out as well. Today is What Would You Make? And our hosts are OK at Home DIY, Connie's Creative Creations, and our co-host is Crafty Leany. So more about that in a minute. But first, DIY number one. So my first DIY, I'm going to take these little lamb's ears that I have, some of my chalk paste, chalk paste. also I'm going to be using a chalk couture stencil, a round, a wooden round, and that's my wood part, and then also I'm going to use some torn up fabric that I make into a ribbon, which you'll see in a second. But first I'm going to use my Antique Wax by Waverly, and I'm just using a baby wipe, and I sectioned off... Um, with some painter's tape the top and the bottom and I am just going to wipe that on with my baby wipe. I find this the easiest way to use the antique wax. It dries faster and it also applies easier as well. So next I'm going to lift the tape up once that's dry and I'm going to mark it right where the line is where I left off with the antique wax. And now I'm going to do that portion with my uh, plaster by Waverly in the center. Actually, I think it's the white. I'm sorry. I thought it was plaster. It's white. And I'm just going to get that all nice and painted in the center. And then I'm going to um, pull the paint up again once it's dry, the painter's tape. And look at those crisp lines. Works perfect every time. So now I'm going to take my Chalk Couture stencil. I am a Chalk Couture designer. If you want to know any information about Chalk Couture, you can email me. But I also have the link down below of the shop. And you can become a designer for as um, only like $20 now, I think it is, which is really cheap. And I'm going to use some surfacing wax first down because this is not chalk. This is wood we're using. So the surfacing wax is what helps it not to bleed and it helps my stencil not to stick so much to, to the stencil and make it bleed underneath when I add my chalk paste. Now I use the fuzzing mat to fuzz it as well. That also helps it so that I can move it around if I need to. And next, I'm going to use some black chalk paste, and I'm using my little squeegee, and I'm just going to um, squeegee that on through. It's a screen stencil that I am using, so you're only going to see the actual words. This is really helpful when you're using these type of stencils instead of a Cricut. If you don't own a Cricut, this is a great alternative. So once I get that all on there, then I'm going to lift it up. And it says welcome-ish, depending on who you are and how long you stay. I love that one. It's so cute. So now I took the lamb's there and I just cut off the stem. And I'm just going to kind of make like a little swag on top with these. So I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue and I put one lamb's ear on each end and I'm going to use some twine and I'm just going to start wrapping it. And that's what's going to hold these two pieces together so that I can glue the whole piece down onto my board. Now, some people use staple gun and just staple them in. I don't, I don't do that. I just use the glue and it works just fine. Now I'm going to take my strips of ribbon and also fabric that I just tore into strips and I am going to make a really cute rag bow or you could call it a fussy bow. I don't know. There's so many different names for these, but I just kind of gather it in my bow dabra and I just kind of like put my ribbon down first and then I use my um, fabric and I just kind of loop it back and forth until I have don't have any more left. And I did use a little too much ribbon in this one, but it's ribbon I had left over. So I just figured I'm going to use it and get it out of my, out of my crash stash, out of my crash stash, out of my craft stash. It's early in the morning, guys. So I'm really tired. Sorry about that. 
and I am just going to stick it all in my this just helps me um keep it all together for me because this way it's not falling all over the place so this is what I like to use my Bodabra for but if you don't know how to make bows this is a great alternative and I really like these raggy bows I, I call it raggedy bow but it just, I don't know. I just like the way they look. And I love the rustic look and vintage. And I think these are great bows for that look. And then I just zip tied them together in the center. And now, of course, I'm just going to do my ribbon and little ducktails. So I just fold them in half and then cut in an upward um, diagonal sort of. And then I am going to um, just fluff out my bow. Just like you would a regular bow. And... This looks so cute, and I absolutely love the way they turn out on things like these rounds. I think it looks super, super cute and pretty, and I love it. And then I'm just going to um, glue it down to the center. And next, I'm going to put one of these burlap flowers that I had, and I'm going to glue that to the center as well. And there is that part. Next, I am going to take my... Um, jute twine string and I'm going to string on some beads. So for this I did a black one and then I did just a neutral color bead and I just kept going all the way down until um, I got as many beads as I thought I wanted for my round. Now I love making these rounds. I actually sold this at my craft show a couple weeks ago and um, I sell these really really quick. People really really like them a lot. Now this part I am going to staple down because <laughs> I want it to stay. I don't want it to fall when somebody goes to hang it. So these I do use and I do staple them down with my little staple gun. But if you don't have a staple gun and you're just using it for your own decor purposes, you could just um, glue it down to the back and then put a piece of felt in the back or whatever and that will make it stay as well. But there it is, you guys. Isn't it cute? I absolutely love it. But then I thought it needed something more. So I took some of this burlap ribbon that I bought on Amazon. It is in my Amazon shop. I will have that link down below as well in my description box. And I just glued it down to both sides there where I made the center. I just thought it made it look a little bit more high end, I guess. And I just glued that down as well, and it looked out, came out super, super fabulous. I love it. I love using these ribbons for this purpose, and they just look so good on anything when you want to use it to line something or, you know, give it a really more decorative touch, I guess you could say. And then I just went around with my scissors and cut off the edges. But this turned out so good, you guys. And like I said, I sold it at my craft show, so. But I'm thinking about making one for myself because I think it looks super farmish. So today is all about um, okay home DIY. It's everything about making stuff with wood and Connie's creation. And go check out our co-host this month. And there is a huge playlist. Check that out down below as well. So this is a wood piece that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I yes, I'm using Chocotour again. Now, if you're not interested in Chocotour, you could use anything you want on these wood surfaces. This is just for inspiration, but this is what I decided to use. I sold this at my craft show as well. But what I'm doing is I am going in each section. I got this wood piece from Hobby Lobby. It was on sale, guys, for four bucks. And this is a heavy duty piece, okay? And I absolutely love the shiplap look. So the first thing I did is we're going to paint it all different colors. So I'm going to do an Easter one. So I am doing white. And then I'm also going to use another color, which is a yellow. Now, I believe this one is yellow dandelion or something like that. These are all folk art paints that I used. The first paint I used the white was actually a chalk paint, which is um, by Waverly. And... Next, I use lavender. I also use um, this blue color, which is a light powder blue. And then I also use a green, which is like a eucalyptus, I believe. It's a really light um, green color. But I'm using all Easter colors. Oh, and then I use this pink. This pink is really pretty. It's a vintage um, rose, and I really love this color. 
and I just did each ship lap piece of wood on here. You can see where the lines are. It's actual ship lap, and I am just um, painting each section with each one of these colors. Then I'm going to come in with a color to kind of, I wanted the shiplap part to actually show a little bit better. So I'm coming in with some of my truffle by Waverly and I'm using a very thin paintbrush and I'm just going over those lines with it. Now it does not have to be perfect if you happen to find one of these pieces or you decide to do shiplap. It's not supposed to be perfect, so the lines do not have to be perfect when you do these. Um, you wa actually want them to be imperfect because you want it to look like real wood. So that's what I did here. And I just went over each one of the sections with a very thin line. Then I'm going to come in and I'm actually going to sand everything once it's dry. And that's going to kind of smooth everything out. I also go around the edges and do a dry brush around the edges just to kind of like show the edges a little bit more on each end. And I did that as well. Then I actually went over the whole thing too with a very dry light brush um, just to make it look really good and look, you know, make it stand out even more. And I like the vintage look. I love the rustic look. And that's what I was going for with the dry brushing. And like I said, I sold this one too at my craft show. And if you don't aren't interested in Chuck or you don't have a stencil, you can use any stencils you want, you guys. All of the craft stores sell stencils. Even Dollar Tree has stencils now. You can make your own um, sign, you know. This is just all for inspiration. And I'm just showing you some of the stuff that Chuck Couture has in case you are interested. So just check down below. Um, I also buy stencils on Amazon. They're really cheap. I have a couple of those in my Amazon shop down below as well that you could check out that are really cheap, okay? And like I said, I did a really light dry brushing of the uh, truffle as well. Now I'm going around and I'm just sanding everything just so that it's kind of smooth and everything kind of goes together. And then if I went and dark in any spots, I can lighten that up by sanding it as well with my sand, with my sander. And that's it, you guys. And then we're going to come in next and see how I'm doing the lines a little bit more to lighten them up a little bit. I just went in with my little finger sander. And that's in my Amazon shop too, my finger sander, in case you're interested. So now this stencil is really big. So I had to fuzz it, the top portion first, because the fuzzing pad isn't that big. And um, then I turned it around and fuzzed the other section. Now I'm just putting it on top. And I also used the surfacing wax with this as well, because this isn't chalk. So I use that. And I'm going in with this pink peony, it's called chalk paste and then I'm going in with this brown bark color um, chalk paste that these are all um, from Chalk Couture but you can also buy chalk paste on Amazon too so just so you guys know and so there's many options <laughs> to chalk paste and you don't have to just use one company and then I'm going in and I'm using my little squeegee to do the greenery, which this I'm using a forest color for the greenery part on the on the stencil. And then I'm going to use the purple lavender color for my flowers. And then the bottom part, it says welcome every bunny and, um, or bunnies welcome. And I'm going to do that with the pink as well. And then once it's all done, you're going to lift it up. But you want to make sure that if you do have these uh, chalk stencils, that you want to wash them immediately so that you can use them next time, okay? And you can use them over and over and over again. So now I made another swag for the center. So same thing I did with my round that you saw me do. I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm just going to put some flowers and some greenery on each side, gather them together in the middle, and then I'm just going to wrap them with my twine to hold them in place. And then I just glue the end of the twine at the end when I get it wrapped enough, and that holds it all together. This way you're just taking one piece and you're gluing it onto your surface all together, which makes it much, much easier. 
But look at how pretty that stencil is, isn't it, you guys? But I do have um, Easter ones in my Amazon shop, too. And then I just stuck a bow in the middle, you guys, and that's it. Now, I don't have no after pictures. I'm sorry, because I sold these at my craft show, and I forgot to take the pictures first. So I hope you guys are getting a good look while watching me craft. Normally, I don't do that. Normally, I'll show you a picture at the end, but I just don't have them. I'm sorry, guys. But there it is, you guys. I think it came out so cute. Let me know what you guys think down below. And also, don't forget to go check everyone out in the playlist. And I want to thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay crafty. Bye.